Good afternoon and welcome to the Global Roundtable. Uh, we are here in the offices of Global Foundation for Democracy and Development and we have the honor of hosting uh, Mr. Ambassador Aslo from Tajikistan. Uh, Ambassador Aslo, thank you very much for visiting us today and joining the Global Roundtable. And as we know, the purpose of the ra Global Roundtable is to present different countries to the audiences. We have as well on the internet as on the websites and programs organized by South South News and the Global Foundation for Democracy and Development. So today, uh, Mr. Ambassador uh, Aslo is here with us to talk a little bit about Tajikistan. And also with us is Ambassador Francis Lorenzo for Dominican Republic and the rest of the team for Global Foundation for Democracy and Development. And we also have a guest, a Dominican student in New York, Nicole Fernandez, that has joined us with some questions from students and other people who have been following Global Roundtable on the internet. Uh, so, Mr. Ambassador, let me just uh, talk a little bit about what we have learned about your country and give it as a background to our conversation. So, Tajikistan is a country in Central Asia, west to China, surrounded by Afghanistan, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, and China. It's a landlocked country, mountainous. Its area is around uh, 143,000 square kilometers. Its population is around 7.5 million, out of which uh, about 80% are Tajiks, about 15% are Uzbeks, and there is also a small per percentage of Russian and Kyrgyz population. Uh, the religion is Muslim and mostly Sunni, about 85%. The capital is Dushanbe, and Ambassador Lorenzo has been there and visited it and can tell us a little bit later about it. It's divided in two provinces. The official language is Tajik, but Russian is still widely used. And the independence was obtained on the 9th of September 1991, so it's a pretty new country. Uh, the government, the form of government, there is a chief of state who is the president, there is a prime minister, and there is a bicameral supreme assembly that consists of national assembly and the assembly of the representatives. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, this was just a brief presentation for the audiences who maybe haven't heard of Tajikistan, but could you kindly talk about Tajikistan in your own words and just give us a brief presentation of maybe some facts that you would like to highlight and uh, some areas that maybe we haven't touched upon? Thank you very much. First of all, I would like to thank uh, South South News and uh, uh, your foundation for democracy and development uh, for organizing of this meeting. Uh, as you uh, said, uh, my country is mountainous country in Central Asia. It is a very beautiful country, uh, and uh, but we have only some uh, uh, economic problems. Uh, about uh, political situation, you know that uh, in my country, uh, political s uh, situation is very stable. My government has uh, two more uh, big uh, priority. Uh, first of all, it is uh, ensuring of uh, 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 energy independence of Tajikistan, and uh, of course, uh, ensuring of food security. Because, as you said, 93% uh, of uh, territories are mountains, only 7% of territory uh, acceptable uh, for the uh, uh, agriculture crops. Uh, that's why w we are importing, uh, import some uh, uh, goods uh, from outside of country. Uh, it, it, this is also uh, uh, makes a lot of uh, difficulties for us. Uh, however, we have a, a good uh, um, conditions, uh, I mean uh, uh, climatic uh, soil conditions in mountainous areas too. Uh, only 6% of our territory are glaciers and uh, more than 40% mm -hmm. uh, territory uh, covered by permanent uh, snow. But, uh, we can use for, uh, for example, mm, uh, growing of uh, fruits and uh, other kinds of the uh, 
uh, agriculture more than 25% uh, of territory. Let me, we have many questions prepared. Let me try to select a few for mm -hmm. you. Uh, let me uh, ask uh, something about your position, international position. Uh, we have with us Asuncion Sanz, uh, who covers the area of international relations, and she has a question in that area. Mr. Ambassador, uh, Tajikistan was a part of the Soviet Union republics until the fall of the, of the Union. Um, uh, and China has been investing heavily in your country. How would you describe the relationship of Tajikistan with China and Russia? And what would you expect uh, from these powerful neighbors that, you ha your s that are surrounding your country? Thank you. We have a very good uh, relationship, cooperation with these two biggest countries. And uh, as for Russia, uh, currently we have uh, about uh, one million our uh, working migrants in Russia. And we, have, uh, we are managing this, uh, any uh, issues regarding the uh, working migrants uh, on bilateral uh, agreement between uh, uh, two our countries. And uh, also, uh, we are members of uh, regional organizations, uh, and uh, like uh, CIS, uh, you know, uh, this organization, and Eurasian uh, organization, uh, where uh, Russia and Tajikistan are members of uh, and also some our uh, uh, neighbor countries. And uh, Russia, uh, one of the very important strategic uh, partner of Tajikistan, first of all, uh, uh, for security issues. Uh, as you know, we are bordering, uh, mm -hmm. our country borders with Afghanistan mm -hmm. uh, more than uh, uh, 1,200 kilometers our border with Afghanistan and uh, a lot of uh, challenges, a lot of uh, problems with this country, as you know. That's why uh, uh, we have uh, global anti-terrorist, for example, mm -hmm. strategy of United Nations, mm -hmm. but we have also different regional uh, uh, treaties uh, where uh, one of the leaders is Russia. Uh, uh, as for cooperation with China, first of all, we are cooperating with China on economic issues. You know that China e economy, uh, one of the first in the world. And uh, we have uh, approximately uh, 400 kilometers borders with China. And uh, uh, China today uh, uh, has different agreements between uh, uh, China and our country. For example, uh, with supporting of China, uh, our government uh, constructs uh, uh, hydropower stations, uh, medium and small hydropower stations. China uh, supports uh, Tajikistan for constructing of roads which is very important for our country and which is very expensive. And uh, uh, China also works uh, with our government on uh, development, uh, developing of uh, agriculture and uh, other sectors of economy. So uh, let me uh, go to the area of the environment. You mentioned how important water is. Uh, you mentioned also how important the sustainable and organic agriculture is. So our expert in the environment issues would like to make a question. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. I was just wondering, touching a little bit of what was said earlier, um, uh, we know that the country's main an exports are uh, based on mining and water, um, and you mentioned a little bit about the agriculture. Um, we were curious to know what you suggest the country uh, should do and could do to strengthen its economy and diversify in order to um, overcome the swings of the market. Th thank you. Uh, uh, environment issues, 
as you know, I environment one of the part of sustainable development. Mm -hmm. And for the sustainable development issues, we can call that uh, uh, our region one of the very good uh, example. Because, uh, uh, as you know, in Soviet Union time, our region was specified for cotton production, but uh, during Soviet Union time, uh, uh, the politicians they didn't understand that uh, that they will make a huge problem for our region for the future. That's why now we have very bad consequences. We have RLC crisis in our region. R RLC was one of the four biggest freshwater lakes in the world. But now it is like uh, the died, dead sea, like uh, uh, the uh, RLC degraded by 11 times the volume of RLC, RLC and uh, the uh, uh, mineralization. That's why one of the main, very important issues, regional issues and by uh, in international issues, uh, interstate uh, issues in our region, it's uh, water allocation uh, and uh, water using problem in uh, five countries. Uh, from five uh, uh, countries of the region, two of them water-giving countries, upstream countries. It's my country and Kyrgyzstan and three of uh, other countries are downstream countries, uh, water-taking countries. Uh, and uh, my country uh, gives uh, more than 60% uh, all of the waters uh, in the rivers of the Central Asia. So talking about water and water management, uh, we have a question from our audience members and uh, Nicole Fernandez is going to read the question that came from Antonio Coco from Dominican Republic. Mr. Ambassador, the role of water as a resource for the development of a country is unquestionable, but the results will depend on the strength of the institution managing it. What is that institution in Tajikistan and its competences? It's very good uh, question. It's very professional because without uh, the regional bodies, without interstate uh, uh, separate uh, committees or commissions, it's impossible to uh, manage uh, regional water resources. That's why uh, we have same uh, interstate water coordination committee. Uh, the, this uh, committee uh, located commission, sorry, located in uh, Uzbekistan, in our neighbor country, and they're uh, responsible for the water al uh, allocation between our five countries. But from my country is our Ministry of uh, Water Resources and Melioration is member of this commission. We have another question related to Millennium Development Goals and Tajikistan that you mentioned previously. And Jamila Eusebio from Global Foundation is going to make it. Yes, Mr. Ambassador, a statistic indicates that in Tajikistan, 60% uh, of the population live below the poverty line. Does your country expect to achieve the Millennium Development Goals guidelines to eradicate extreme poverty and hunger by this time? Thank you. 60% uh, uh, it was uh, before the 2003. And uh, as I said, the uh, government uh, now uh, implements uh, uh, our national uh, development strategy also to uh, uh, national strategies for uh, uh, reducing of poverty, power reduction, poverty reduction. And the first uh, strategy and program for poverty reduction was for uh, the period of 2007-2009 and uh, the uh, result of uh, this uh, strategy we reduced uh, our uh, poverty on level uh, 53 percent uh, in 2009 
and uh, now we are, uh, our government uh, implements uh, the second uh, poverty reduction strategy for uh, 2000 for the period of 2010 and 2012 and in the end of this period we have uh, to reduce the poverty rate uh, uh, on the level of uh, 40% and uh, we have uh, good progress on uh, this issue uh, because uh, government could uh, uh, involve uh, not only uh, uh, our uh, 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 resources, also uh, could involve a lot of resources from outside, uh, uh, from the uh, international organizations, and uh, we uh, developed a good mechanisms for the uh, uh, implementation of this. Uh, uh, strategies and uh, we have a good partners like World Bank, uh, uh, UN organizations, UNDP and uh, Asian Development Bank and other international institutions and we hope that uh, uh, we will reach uh, this level, I mean uh, 40 percent uh, in the end of uh, this uh, term in 2012. Thank you so much, Ambassador Aslo. And then here with us is Mr. Uh, Francis Lorenzo, Ambassador uh, on behalf of Dominican Republic to the UN and a long-standing friend uh, of Mr. Ambassador Aslo. So uh, he has visited Dushanbe. He can tell us a little bit about it and also talk about his interaction and his experience at the United Nations and working together with Ambassador Aslo, uh, particularly on water issues. Thank you. Thank you, Natasha. Ambassador Aslav is not only a colleague or a friend, he's mm -hmm. a brother. <laughs> and I thank uh, not only him, but also his president and his government for the hospitality that I received, as well as uh, my delegations when we were uh, in Dushanbe. I think that you are not here only in the capacity as the permanent representative of the Republic of Tajikistan here to the United Nations but also as the chairman of the OIC Organization of the Islamic Conference. We understand the constraint of time that you have because of the situation in the Middle East. But your country has shown a leadership here at the United Nations when we talk about the issue of water. Resolution 64-198 illustrates very well the outcome of the document that came out out of Dushanbe. I think that the fact that all the participants that participated in Dushanbe on that declaration illustrate very well the importance of water, water for life. But not only that, I think that also your president received an award last year that was March 22nd, your prime minister came here and he received the award on behalf of your president. Beside that, in 2004, my president was here. Your president was at the same round table with Jeffrey Sachs when Tajikistan, the Dominican Republic, as well as four other countries were highlighted as pilot country. And I think that for the past years, your country, when you talk about the poverty reduction strategy, has well illustrated the map role that they have established in order for them to achieve the Millennium Development Goal. But there is one element that we would like to highlight, and is the importance of financing, it's the importance of technology. When I was in your country, I realized the need that exists in that area. And that's the reason why you are trying to allocate the resources for you to bring a pipe that is going to come all the way to the mountains to the other side and have access to clean water for more than 12,000 people. Technology, financing is important. We had a visit to a U.S. company here. It was recently, uh, about uh, six weeks ago, where they talk about a new technology that perhaps maybe can be used potentially for the need that many developing countries. So I would like to uh, congratulate you for that leadership that every year your delegation and your government has here at the United Nations when we talk about the resolution that is adopted as well as uh, the meetings and the conference that every year you have. And we hope that the foundation as well as, uh, as you said, the uh, permanent mission of uh, Korea, Germany, and others are going to be joining a meeting that we're going to be having here on March the 22nd. 
that Natasha, we can then collaborate also with all the partners that are going to be UNESCO is going to be also one of the uh, co-sponsors of the conference. This conference, we had it last year. This year, we're going to have it again, and we're looking forward to see how we can also partnership with the foundation. Several ministers are going to be coming as speakers on that, as well as members of the private sector. So that way, then we can together coordinate and participate in that meeting. So. Uh, congratulations on your leadership on the issue related to water at the United Nations. And thank you for coming here to the Global Roundtable. And Mr. Ambassador, I have to add something. Uh, we have learned a lot about Tajikistan. Thank you for that. We didn't have time to talk t about Dominican Republic, but here right now we would like to invite you to visit us. And I hope that Ambassador Lorenzo will guide you, will be your best guide in Dominican Republic, and then we can talk about Dominican Republic. Thank you very much. I thank you for organizing of this very good meeting. And I would like to add only one thing that uh, I s signed uh, uh, on behalf of my government diplomatic relationship last year with the ambassador uh, to the United Nations. It means that the cooperation between our two countries must be uh, uh, start in new level, on new level, and uh, I hope that uh, uh, the um, Dominican Republic uh, people, they will know more about my country, and uh, I will do my best also in order to provide more information in my country to m our people about uh, your beautiful countries, and thank you for cooperation. This is your introduction to Dominican Republic, so we would like you to have it and take it home and enjoy the beautiful pictures. And okay. then I think very soon when Ambassador Lorenzo organizes uh, the dates for mm -hmm. you, you will sure. be able to visit the country and, and see that it's even more beautiful than the pictures we made. Thank you. Uh, I also bring uh, one um, book. It is small than, smaller <laughs> than your book, <laughs> <laughs> but it is uh, about the uh, climatic and glacier and water resources and other issues in Tajikistan. Thank you so much.